A couple things I wanted to add listening to what Mark said. One is uh, I was talking about characters, what does the character want? That's if the, there was only one character in the scene. I think what you always want to look for as a writer is if you've got two or more characters in the scene, you want to create a situation where they want opposing things or, an, or because otherwise there's no conflict. Or one way to look at it is every scene is a power grab. Everybody wants to take control of the situation in whatever way that means to them. And so how are they sort of secretly jockeying for position, you know, mm -hmm. like he and I do. Like which of us, we're all just worried, we're worried about which of us looks smarter. See, that's what this whole interview has been. The other thing um, that you said about the, the, uh, the desires on the part of the character, I was thinking, I know you said there's a lot more than two, but two more I would think about as the writer um, besides, what were the two you said? What does the character well, well, no, the, 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 the two different objectives. Yeah. The two well, basically objectives. what I broke down, Michael, is what I call the public objective. Right. In other words, if I ask, in fact, anybody in this room now, what, what, what are you doing here? What do you want? What's your objective right now? And we could talk about we're doing this interview. That's our public objective. Then there's underneath that, deep underneath is a private objective, which may not even be recognized. Well, I, yeah, that's what I was... It may be in the unconscious. What's driving that character to try to do that? Right. And one way I would look at it, it's not quite the same as a desire, is to ask, what is the character hiding from the other person consciously? What is she hiding from him? And what is she hiding from herself? Mm. What's the thing that she's not yet aware of that is really driving her and, you know, underneath? Especially in the first half or three-fourths of the movie. Towards the end, you'd hope that all that would come to the surface. But uh, deception and secrecy are very, very powerful in telling a story because they add a, a whole new layer of conflict. They get into this inner journey stuff and they'll, and the more conflict and the more layers, the more you're gonna pull in your audience. That's good, I like the hiding thing. The hiding. Yeah. See, because I was into that, yeah, the subconscious or the unconscious or the, you know, the unaware right. of, but the hiding and deception and secrecy, that's good. I'm gonna steal that, can I steal that? Oh sure, okay. it's yours. Thank you. No, I'll, you can still use it. I mean, I'm not taking it forever. Oh, okay. You're, you want to share it. You don't want to steal it. No, I'm not going to stay. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to. As long as we're clear that my agenda is to I'll, look better. I'll give you credit for it. Okay, good. Okay. Because okay. we know my stated objective is to look smarter. I think we. Yes, and, and I'm trying and I'm trying to help you with that. I appreciate that. I'll help you think you're winning. Thank you. Let's move on. That was great. Let's move on. <laughs>